Welcome to the Three Shape Trios Implant Planning and Restorations Made Easy live virtual demonstration this evening. And it is my pleasure to introduce our very own Kelly Bevington, and she is our Director of Interoral Technology. Take it away, Kelly. Thanks so much, Jessica. Happy to be here and really thrilled and honored to have Dr. Angelis uh, be our presenter tonight. I was fortunate enough to spend a day and a half, I think it was together, uh, Hermie, about two years ago. He's a wealth of knowledge. Um, please feel free to engage and ask questions and uh, really uh, take advantage of, of learning from him. Um, Dr. Analyst graduated uh, from the University of Manila in the Philippines and is a postgraduate degree with advanced orthodontics as well as implantology. And he's been practicing um, as a general practitioner for the last 16 years um, in the National Intelligence Coordinating Agency and Philippine National Oil Company office consecutively. With his knowledge, uh, Dr. Angelis will be able to provide a high-end training experience and a complete clinical overview on implementing digital workflows into your practice, um, really focusing on implant planning and design. And with that, uh, Dr. Hermie, I'll let you take it away. Thanks so much for being here. Yes, thank you so much, Kelly. And I would, first of all, before I start, I would like to say good afternoon to everyone and good evening to others, right? So I think we're telecast all over the US, East and West and Canada as well. Hello, hello there, guys. Um, well, first of all, my name is Hermie. You can call me Hermie, uh, Kelly. Um, thank you. I've worked with uh, Three Shape for more than seven years now, and I've been teaching uh, not just trios, but um, on the clinical side, but also implant studio, ortho, design studio, name it. So I've been I've been with them for seven years now, and uh, I'm happy that I am um, connected with the education, and I'm actually grateful that I have invite uh, I've been invited uh, by BSG. So for tonight, guys, uh, we're going to talk about two, um, two topics. The first topic will be the process of scanning um, to implant planning or using implant, um, implant Studio, which is the name of the software. Uh, we're going to be doing an implant planning. I'm going to be demoing. I'm going, I'm going to be demoing it and a surgical guide design as well. And then after that first topic, then we're going to have a question and answer portion. And then the second topic will be uh, on how to scan a single implant, you know, and uh, send it to your lab, All right? So let me share my, my screen. So earlier, what I did is that I have um, scanned a, uh, this is actually a model, but I have here a, uh, a live case that I can share it with you. This is a single um, case of tooth number four, all right? So um, what you are seeing right now in your screen is the dental desktop um, of the trios, right? Where your implant studio software is also within the dental desktop. So this is what um, our user interface looks like. Right, so you can see uh, on the left side we have all the patients list right here as a sample, and um, on the upper center uh, of our screen is the workflow from scanning down to the implant planning and surgical guide design. All right, so earlier what I did is let me show you my my sample case. So earlier what I did is I just created. You know, how are we going to create an implant planning using our trios, right? So what I did under send to box, I have selected my DSG Scranton as an example. This is just an example of um, a laboratory that I am connected with via communicate account. So when you are asking your laboratory, make sure that you're asking the right question with them. If you're asking them about their uh, email account, ask them if they have a communicate account because their email account should be registered under communicate so that you can 
you know, connect with each other. It's like Facebook, you invite them, they will accept you so you could get connected and so you could send all your cases to your lab. Now, after choosing the lab right here under send to, so if I click this, I'll just show it to you. So these are the sample labs that I'm connected with. And if I scroll to the right, there's my ESG sample laboratory. So all I need to do is just to pick that up. So once I chose that, ESG will be under the send to box. Now on the right side of the screen, right here, we have a calendar right here. So I have chosen the date. So if you could, um, if you click that calendar and uh, set up a date, this is actually the date of the delivery of your surgical guide. All right, so as to when you want your surgical uh, guide back to your office from the laboratory. After choosing the, la uh, the date, you can click set. Now, once we set that laboratory and the date for the calendar, we chose the tooth that we are going to place an implant to, right? So this time I have chosen tooth number four. And after I have chosen tooth number four, I go to the um, anatomy, okay? This is an option, all right? The reason why I would, I would encourage you to choose crown right here at the end right here is for us to be able, when we, when we on, the, on that part of implant planning right here, when we chose the type of platform for our implant, that implant will be based on the crown that we are going to add into the workflow. You will see it later on. You will see the uh, why it's so important to choose a crown. So I have chosen a crown. This time we are not going to choose any type of material. This is for the US, but for Canada, uh, Spuritane crown is actually included in some parts of uh, other countries like Canada. So in, in Canada's case, I just wanted to explain this. Uh, you can choose the type of material for your Spuritane crown, right? But for the US, we are still waiting for uh, the approval of the uh, FDA for our Spuritane crown to be applied as part of your implant studio, right? So for now, since I am from the US, I am not going to choose any type of material. I just chose crown, right? Now, after choosing that anatomy, click your tooth again, needs to, uh, an implant with, and then click on the implant planning. And you have to make sure that you chose tooth supported implant planning and surgical guide design. and just put a check mark on these two boxes, right? Now there's a lot of question, Hermie, is it possible for me just to do an implant planning and not to do surgical guide design? Yes, but it is not possible for you to create a surgical guide without the implant planning. Now there's a lot of questions as well. Hermie, I have another software for the implant planning. Can I integrate that in here and then do a surgical guide? answer is no because implant studio itself has its own implant planning all right so after you have put a check mark on these two boxes right so i just click next and then what i did earlier is that i have scanned my lower right and i have scanned my upper as well so it is very important when you are scanning guys to follow the scan strategy Right, let's follow the scan strategy. Scan strategy for the lower is occlusal lingual buckle. For the upper, it's going to be occlusal buccal lingual. Why? Why is that so important? Because Rios has a, an artificial intelligence which can help you trim the rest of the tissues, like the tongue, cheek, or any any uh, instrument inside the patient's mouth, or even your finger. Right, so it will help you trim those parts. So if you follow the scan strategy. Now, after scanning upper and lower, we scan the bite as well. Make sure that the patient bites well. There we go. And make sure that every, um, all the scans are already aligned. The alignment for this one, for the TRIOS, um, TRIOS software is aligning it automatically. And you will hear a ding sound. Once you hear the ding sound, then you can stop scanning the bite and the software will automatically align 
upper and lower arches. Now, after I have scanned this one, right, I will go to post process. Why is it so important to have a post process? So that the software will finalize all the holes or it will fill out all the holes that uh, has been created in our scans. So you don't have to worry about rescanning them unless those holes are like more than five millimeters in, in, in diameter. Then, and if also, if you are going to be doing any type of case for a certain um, tooth, right, on that quadrant, then you need to rescan. All right. So after I have post processed it, I just need to go to the scan import, right? As you can see here, um, on the uh, import scans, uh, since I have scanned upper and lower, this eye icon is highlighted. So if I click this eye icon right here, there is my upper scan and there is my lower scan as well. Now, common question, Hermie, do we have to uh, not import or not scan the lower? It's gonna be up to your discretion. But I would advise for you to scan the antagonist as well, so that when we try to do our, when we apply the crown later on, the virtual crown, we call it a virtual crown for the US because US cannot, again, uh, have the scrutine crown as of yet. Right, but for Canada, uh, it's it's a must for you to um, scan the antagonist. All right, when you apply those crowns. Now, what we're going to do here, what is locking in here, is that we need to import the CT scan. When we talk about the CT scan, um, a lot of people are asking me, Hermie, what kind of uh, DICOM file do we need for the CT scan? We need a DICOM uncompressed file either multiple or a single slice all right again that dicom that dicom file is uncompressed either multiple or a single slice you can use any type of cbcd scans out there for as long as it actually gives you the right um the right uh file as i was saying it is going to be it should be uncompressed and um it's either multiple or a single slice so for this, at this one, let me transfer, let me go back to my other sample case so that we can continue to move on to the topic, right? So, because right, I don't have the CBCD scan of this model, obviously. So I will just go to this crown number four, just to continue, all right? So what I did is after I have scanned the upper and the lower, right? All I need to do is just to click the CT, uh, CT scan right here. All right, so there you go. I have previously imported it, obviously. All right, so what I did is I just click this one. And if your CBCT scan is saved in your computer and it is, or it is in a USB stick, right? Just um, put it into your computer. So, and then just locate the file within that computer. Um, your CBCD scans or DICOM files should be uh, at least like 300, 400 uh, DICOM, um, yeah, DICOM files, right? So, and then all you need to do is just to highlight just one DICOM file for you to be able to import and incorporate it in your implant studio. So that's what I did. So here is my DICOM file right here. And if you will notice, I have a lot of scatters and noise right there. You don't have to worry about it because soft, the software has a threshold bar so that you can minimize the threshold, uh, the scatters and the noise, right? So this is my sample. This is a real case, a live case. It's one of our colleagues in Copenhagen. There we go. And this is my antagonist. Now, after I have imported all the scans, I have after I have all the scans, I will just click next, right there. Let's go right in here. All right, now what is requiring us is, the software is requiring us is for us to have a tooth removal. So for us to do that, to, to remove this root right here, I just click the plus sign right here. After clicking the plus sign, I have created this outline right here, as you can see. 
and you can create an outline. So let's say, for example, if this tooth is a full crown, right? So all you need to do is just to go to that CEJ or cemento enamel junction and create an outline around it. All right. So once you have, I have created an outline around this one, the software will automatically remove the tooth or extract the tooth. All right. Now, let me go right in here. I'll just X this out because I just clicked the plus sign again. So let me try to do this. You can see right there. I'm creating it. There we go. There you go. As you can see, the software had extracted it or removed the tooth. Now, after removing the tooth, all I need to do is just to click next. All right. Now, what I have in here is a crown. This is a virtual crown or an AI crown that the software had provided us. All I need to do as soon as I go right into this anatomy design, all I need to do is just to double left click. So it is important for you to have a mouse with a right click, left click, and a scroll wheel bar in the middle so that you could easily manipulate the 3D view, like what I am doing right now. So for the US, all you need to do is just to um, place this crown, right? And in Canada, uh, place this crown in the right position. You can use the green control point to elongate the tooth, um, to change the diameter of the tooth right there. And to rotate is to use that, those red control points right there. So what I did is I just placed this tooth accordingly, right? I know it's not perfect, but uh, I could place this one, right, in, in the right position. I just did it quickly. Now for Canada, right, so if you will notice right here on the left side, we have the different tools. And I'm not going, I'm not going to go through with that tools um, unless you go on a training um, with 3Shape or with DSG, right? So all you need to do is just to use these tools for you to be able to create a perfect crown a final restoration for Canada, right? For the screw retained crown. So you can use all these tools, change the anatomy of the tooth, to shape it accordingly, according to how you want it, right? Now, if you will notice on the right side, I have the purple tooth, I have the white tooth. The white tooth is my virtual crown, okay? If I close this one and turn that on, turn that back on, as you can see, if, if I have a full crown right here, it's going to show up. And that you can use that as a reference when you go to your uh, implant planning as well, all right? However, for Canada, obviously, you're doing a screw retained crown and you should be using that screw retained crown as a reference to place your, um, your implant. Now, after placing this tooth, right? I go next. And all we need to do is just to crop the CBCP or the, the X-ray. There are three X-rays right here that's going to show up. There we go. So all we need to do is just to look at all this graphic information, volume information, and cropping information. You can also actually crop all this information by grabbing this blue control point. So if you will notice, I am cropping the, the lower because I don't need it, right? And the reason why we are cropping most of the time is that when we send that to the lab, or if we're going to save that, save this into our computer, it's not going to eat up a lot of space. Or when you send it, you can send it right away as fast as possible because of the lowering of the memory field. Now, after cropping some parts, in the x-ray, right, that you don't need. You can go next. And what is important in here on the panoramic curve is that we move this plane right here going towards the, uh, the gingiva. Why is because when we look at the panoramic curve, we are able to see the, uh, the sinuses, right? And if we are doing the lower, we are moving this, obviously, for the lower, going towards the gingiva so that we can see the nerve uh, canals, right? Because for the lower, you have to identify the canals, right? But since we don't have the canals, obviously, for the upper, then what is important here is that we can view the sinuses, all right? 
Now, also what is important in the panoramic curve is this panoramic curve line. This panoramic curve line should be right in the center of each tooth. Now, a lot of times, Hermie, can we add a dot right here? Or can we add another dot so that we can move that um, panoramic curve line? The answer is no. All you need to do is just to grab this, any yellow dot right here with your left click mouse and you can move it accordingly how you want to use it. But what is important right here is that this panoramic green curve line is right within the center of the tooth for each teeth, right? So after doing that, I go next and the software will automatically align the CBCT scan and your trio scans. Now, a lot of times doctors, doctors are calling me, doctors are calling me um, schools, they would say, Hermie, I, th I don't think that the alignment is correct, so what do we need to do? So if I will uncheck the confirm alignment, and I will go to the initial alignment right here, if this is not correct, if the alignment is not correct because of um, a lot of scatters and noise, I can use this toggle three-point alignment. As you can see at the bottom of my screen, I have the CT pane and a uh, and scan right here, right there, right? So all I need to do is just to lock both so that I can move them. And as I was saying earlier, that at the bottom of the CT pane, we have a threshold bar that you can move right or left so that you can minimize the, the scatter and noise. Why is that so important? Because all we need to do is just to um, show for us, the software to show us the enamel part or the crown part of each tooth. And that is where we are going to place those three points. When you place those three points on the CT pane, you are going to be placing another um, three points as well onto the uh, surface scan or your trio scan. Make sure that those points are um, on the same spot, on the crown portion only, right? So once we're satisfied here, we are also we also have the uh, uh, cross section right here for you to be able to identify whether the as you can see right there, you can see right there, my two scans are perfect, uh, perfectly scanned, uh, perfectly aligned with each other. All right. So after you have um, validated. The alignment, we can go back, we can click the confirmation right here, and all we need to do is just to click the uh, confirm alignment box so that we can proceed to the next workflow. Now, this is very exciting. Now, we are going to place an implant, a single implant. But before I do that, okay, before I do that, um, I have here one, it's not really that visible, but there's number one, number two, and number three visibility. For number one, this is a solid view of the 3D uh, model of um, the bone. For number two, visibility is going to be an x-ray view. This is what I always use. After changing that to um, an x-ray view, all I need to do is just to put this slider right here and to hide my surface scan a little bit and as well as the tooth. There we go. There you go. Now, after changing the, the look of the 3D model, right, I have selected this tooth right here. This tooth has a positive green mark, okay? So it's X right now because I have already clicked the plus sign earlier. So once you click this, um, this plus sign, the plus sign right in here, a green plus sign, your implant system will show up. All right. Now for the, for the implant system, we have more than, I believe we have more than 94 implant system included within the software. And I always tell the doctors or any type, any schools or any users out there is that if I'm going to click this, um, blue arrow right here, these are all the 90 plus implant system 
that I have downloaded it. And we will talk more about that one later on, on how to download it. All right, so all you need to do is just to scroll down, look for the implant system. At this point, I have Stroman, highlight Stroman as an example, and you will have the implant system right there. Ask the doctors, or you can, you know, you can identify which implant are you going to be using, highlight it, you can put it as a favorite so that once uh, you move on to the next patient, that if you're going to do an implant planning and surgical guide design, this particular implant system will show up as, show up as a favorite. Once you highlight this implant system, your implant platform or the different uh, sizes of implant will show up. Now, all we need to do is just to identify which platform are you going to be using, right? So left click on it, highlight, and once you highlight it, the software will automatically place the implant okay, in our x-ray, as you can see right here. Now, you can manipulate, okay, you can manipulate the, the, the placement, you can pivot the implant, you can hold the implant uh, with your left click mouse and move it left and right, up and down, how you want it, right? You can also use some measurements right here. Now, if I'm going to make this big, I can click this uh, uh, ruler right here and choose the first icon, which is insert distance measurement. A lot of times it's being asked uh, of me and they say, Hermie, can we do a measurement, multiple measurements on a certain area with that uh, for our, with our x-ray? Yes. So I have highlighted it. As you can see, I have a blue control point following my cursor. I can click a point and then one point on any surface of your x-ray. And there is your measurement right there. You can click uh, this insert density, um, insert distance measurement again, and then measure whatever you want to measure right in here. Now, what is important as well is that we have the density measurement. If I click this density measurement, and if I scroll over the x-ray, you will notice that I have the Hounsfield unit. The HU stands for Hounsfield unit. I can move it anywhere I want to so that I can examine whether um, that particular area of the bone has a high number of Hounsfield unit. I can left click on it. I can put my number right there, grab it with my left click mouse. Now, if you, if you want this as a reference, uh, you can actually take a, a snapshot on this one. There is a camera on top of this box right here. Now, if I click it on the, with the left click mouse, you have that picture right there. You can type in any, any message for yourself, right, as a, as a reference, and then click add comment. If I am going to take a snapshot of this one, this picture will be included in your surgical report. And we will talk more about that surgical report as we move along. All right. Now, if, let's say, for example, this is a lower, right, um, there is going to be an additional uh, workflow before, after the CT preparation, before the implant planning, to identify your nerve, right? So we, ha we have for the lower, it's a must for us to be able to identify the nerve. Now, I will click next. I will go next right here. All right. So... At this point, if you are satisfied, right, with um, with the implant planning that you did, oh, before I forget, I will just go back right in here. Let us choose the type of sleeve. So if I click this icon right here, we have fully guided sleeve, we have pilot sleeves. I would recommend for you to download, if you have the software, to download the third party sleeves that is included in the software as well. Why is because if you do not have this type of sleeves for Strawman, okay, as, a, as an example, right? And when you download those third-party sleeves, you can click this that, uh, arrow right here, and the software will automatically give you the downloaded third-party sleeves. And you can choose from any of these sleeves right here. Now, it's, a, it's very important that we know that um, what, what kind of drill kit do we have, right? Sleeves are based on a drill kit. All right. So I can, if I have a fully guided, I cannot use pilot. Obviously, I have to have a pilot drill, and you know that, guys, right? 
So after choosing the sleeve, you can also choose the offset. Offset is the distance from your sleeve to the implant. You can adjust the sleeves accordingly. However, sometimes there is a certain implant that has a default value of offset and that you cannot move or adjust the offset, all right? So in that case, you have to switch over to your third-party sleeve so that you can you will have a, um, a, a, a way of changing the offset. So you can also see here a density measurement on how much bone will be integrated to, with, your, uh, with your implant. There you go. So I'm using my right-click mouse and rotating the implant. So you will notice if I put right here, there's the threshold uh, value of uh, the bone density. D1 is the most. Right? And D4 is the list, or D5 is the list. Right. Now, if we are satisfied with what we created or what, with what we, if, uh, if we're satisfied with the implant placement, I will click yet, uh, next right there. And all we need to do is to create, there we go, is to create an outline right here. You will notice I have created two outlines, one here and one over there. You don't have to worry about the undercut because the software itself will create a space between the undercut, uh, between the, uh, the surgical guide and your uh, uh, trio scan. All right. Now, also on the left side of the screen, I always follow the uh, automatic insertion direction. Now, you, you also have an option to apply a glue channel around this, uh, this sleeve, or you can also apply the orientation marks. Orientation marks will help you determine the timing of your hex, right? Now, if you are sending this to the lab, make sure, guys, for the doctors, you, you need to ask what type of um, printer are they using. And if I click this down arrow right here, these are the different printers listed uh, within the tree shape software. And all you need to do is just to choose one of them. And if I chose, let's say, for example, form lab right there, all the parameters will change according to the type of uh, printer that I'm going to be using. It's, it's very important for you to ask all uh, your lab before you uh, finalize this case. All right, so after I have created an outline around this tooth right here, the software automatically creates the surgical guide, right? I just created a small one, uh, just as an example. However, the coverage should be two or more teeth on another end. But if you ha don't have a posterior teeth right here, you, you can still create a, a pad right here for the molar pad so that the surgical guide will not rock. There we go. All right, so after I have created this surgical guide design, I will go to bars and windows. At this point, I have selected um, add windows. And all I need to do is just to pop that window there. I can adjust it. I will click another one, add on the interior part of it. There we go. All right, and then the software will automatically create it for you. Now. If we are satisfied with this one, you can add an ID tag. Okay, you can add an ID tag right here. Okay, I can place it right anywhere I want to by left clicking it and then click invert. The software will automatically create that ID tag uh, in there and it's going to be a negative one. It's going to be indented. There we go. There we go, as you can see. Right? Now, we can go next. Let's wait for the preparation of the data approval. Okay, and then the software will automatically create this um, surgical report right here. If, you, if the laboratory would want to uh, submit right, this to the doctors, all you need to do is just to show this uh, surgical report right here. Uh, this surgical report uh, contains your patient's uh, information, um, implant information right there, as well as the implant placement. 
as you can see, as well as the snapshot that you will be taking on each of the window, right? Now, let's say the case was approved. All you need to do is just to approve it. Okay, I have approved the implant planning and I will approve the surgical guide, uh, the, uh, the surgical guide as well. There we go. So after you have approved it, all you need to do is just to hit the send button right here. Once you hit that send button, this is the communicate, right? Um, you, there is a send button at the bottom right here. So all you need to do is just to click that send and this particular case will be received by DSG. This is the information right there for this particular case. Now, if you wanted to get the STL file, I can click this um, icon right here, scan icon. This is the save button icon. The software will automatically create a, um, a CAM output, right? And on that CAM output, you will have the surgical report um, right there. I will click the, uh, the open folder right there. You will have the STL file of the surgical guide that you created. Let's open it up. There you go. There is my surgical guide. All right, there we go. I will just X this out. I also have the drilling protocol. There is the recipe that, um, there's the recipe that um, uh, Stroman had provided us. There are several uh, implant system or implant manufacturers that have provided us with their recipes. So that, you know, the users don't have to calculate it, right? Calculate the, uh, the full, um, full length of the drill. Now you also have obviously the surgical report right there. All right, so this is being saved by the software automatically. You don't have to save it. A lot of times people are asking Hermie, if I go from one, um, uh, in one workflow and to another, and if I close my computer or power shut is shut off, will the software um, save it? automatically and the answer is yes all right so that is a full workflow um, on how to use the trios going towards the implant planning and surgical guide design guys so if i go right in here on the setting part this is where you can choose to download the type of implant system you can see here i have 90 plus mm -hmm implant system and at the bottom of it there's the the different types of third-party sleeves i would recommend you guys to put a check mark right on this box and download all of these things this will come in handy as you create your implant planning all right kelly i'm ready for the question and answer yeah very nice wow it, it's really amazing um how it all meshes together um so that was a great demonstration. I had not seen uh, many parts of that. So I did, we did have a question. So implant, the only way you can do a surgical design, a surgical guide mm -hmm. is to have implant studio. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Got it. Okay. And there's another uh, You can actually purchase this uh, implant uh, planning without the surgical guide. However, you could also purchase both time and uh, you cannot if you have an implant again, as I was saying earlier, as I said earlier that if you have an implant planning I, um, software, uh, not an implant studio software, you cannot incorporate that and then create your surgical guide right into implants. Okay, got it. Got it. Here's another question. Um, is there a specific resin for the surgical guide by Sprint Ray? Specific resin depends on uh, the type of printer. I don't actually, uh, I have no idea of what type of, uh, what type of material that each and every printers are using. 
So each and every printer, I guess, materials are not the same. They're different. So it, it's going to be dependent on the printer that you're going to be using. Is there a particular type of resin material that you have experienced to be um, better or worse? Like just personal experience or are they all pretty equitable? I wouldn't say they're all good. They're all good. Um, I would say, I would say they're all good. Got it. Good. All right. Next question. Uh, can you export the crown design to use as a temporary matrix or can you send to the lab to create? The software for the US, okay, I'll answer it for the US. The software is not capable of creating an STL file of the virtual crown that we have, that I have created um, earlier. However, for Canada, uh, screw retained crown um, will be added within Implant Studio and the software is capable, will be capable of creating an SEL file on that one so that this, the laboratory will, when you submit it, the laboratory will get the SEL file of that uh, particular crown. So, so the answer then is yes. Yes for Canada, yeah. but no for the US. Okay, got it. Because of uh, the FDA approval. Yeah, we, ha we don't have it yet. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, did you say that's awaiting FDA approval? It's waiting for the FDA approval. I have already tested uh, the scrutiny crown um, and it's applicable in Canada right now. It's, they're, they're using it right now, but for the US, we're st it's still pending. Understood. Um, the next one, thanks you for a great presentation. Uh, to learn the whole system, or what other resources are there available? Uh, this attendee happens to be a lab tech and they have limited knowledge of anatomy and the location of the nerves. Well, actually, when you're doing it as a lab, right, um, you have to, all you need to do is just to provide the doctor with um, some of the workflows that I have done. But obviously, when you're in the, on the implant planning part, you have to incorporate the doctors, uh, you know, you have to talk to the doctors. Um, you can just place the implant right there and then ask the doctor to do a team viewer with you guys as a lab, as a lab tech, right? For them to be able to tell you where they would want it to place the implant. You don't have to worry about placing those implants in, 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 in the right spot or not in the right spot, right? But have your doctors, you know, um, be engaged in the process. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All you need to do is just to provide them with, with, with the different workflows. And at the end of it, they're the ones who's going to um, approve it and just let them engage. Nope, that makes sense. Um, Kelly Brown says, thanks, Hermie. Always a pleasure hearing you present. And I'm checking the chat box just to make sure I didn't miss any question over there. I do believe that covers all the questions here from the first section, Hermie. All right. Thank you so much, guys. So let's move on to uh, the next uh, topic, which is how to scan an implant, a single implant, and send it to your lab. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. At this point, I am going to create do it live, right? So I have my trios with me. I have a... Um, I have a trios with me and I have a, a, a model with me with a, uh, an implant on tooth number 30. All right, so I will just choose my lab, right? At this point, there you go, and choose my uh, delivery date as well. So this is what I'm doing right now, guys, is just to remind you on how to scan a single implant if the patient comes uh, came back to you or goes back to your office with with an implant already inside their mouth all right so choose the date i have here tooth number 30. all i need to do is just to choose that tooth right there now two things what is your dentist uh going to be doing like is it a cemented crown or is it a screw retained crown, right? Two different things. 
-hmm. Now, if you are doing a screw retained crown, once you chose the tooth that you're going to place an implant to, all you need to do is to choose abutment. All right, there you go. I can choose screw retained crown right here. And for cemented crown, all I need to do is just to choose abutment and choose anatomy and the type of material of that final restoration, right? Again, guys, what I'm going to do right now is a screw retained crown. After selecting the tooth right here, I click on the abutment. I go to the screw retained crown. And then I, all I need to do is just to choose what type of implant that that patient has, all right? So let's say, for example, um, the implant is Stroman, as an example, right? Now, you need to choose the type of system for that particular implant, right? Let's say bone level, whatever it is, and then choose the connection, whether NC, RC, or SC. Right? Now, I will choose the type of material for this crown right here as a screw retain crown. At this point, I will choose a zirconia monolithic because it's posterior. You always choose zirconia for the posterior. And it's going to be up to you guys to choose the type of um, shade. Okay, Let's say A3 right there. And at this point, on the design settings, do not choose this zirconia monolithic screw retained crown, but choose this screw retained crown, right? Just choose that one, right? And then obviously we need to click DSG right there. And since we are uh, scanning a single implant, right? We can click not in group. Why not in group? Because it's a single implant. We only click create group if there are two or more implants in there. All right. Now, after choosing that indication for screw crown, you will see on the right side that the emergence profile has been highlighted automatically by the software. Why? It's because when we go to the workflow and scan the, uh, the implant inside the patient's mouth, there's going to be an additional workflow. If I click next right here, Okay. there's going to be I'll just remind myself later, an additional workflow to scan your scan body all right so at this point I will just the software is telling me to scan the lower so I'm going to scan quickly obviously for the lower it's going to be a clusal lingual and then buckle. There we go. You will notice that there's my implant right there. Now, the software is going to ask me to identify the implant, right? To put a point or mark the tooth. So I'm not marking inside this tooth right here because this is a hole. I don't have the healing, uh, um, about, uh, healing cap right there, but if I have the healing cap, uh, cap, I can just put a point right there. So I can just put this point right here, and then the software will automatically create this blue color, right, or paint. Now, after I have selected, uh, let me see here. Done, right, there's a done right here. Um, I, I cannot see my done, obviously, because of the, the zoom, right? So I, all I need to do is just to click next, and the software will automatically trim that part. There we go. As you can see right here. Uh, Kelly, let me know if um, the screen is covered uh, by my screen. No, I think you're good. All right. There you go. So the software will trim around that blue uh, paint earlier, right? Now, all we need to do now is to get our, I have here uh, a sample scan body. You will notice right here. 
Now, all I need to do is just to put the scan body in and make sure that the bevel part, I, I have a sample ELOS right here, scan body ELOS. Make sure that the beveled part is always, any beveled part of the scan body is always be on the facial side of any tooth, right? Facial meaning buccal or labial part, right? Facing those, those sides. Mm -hmm. Now, after placing your scan body in, now we can, now we are ready to scan the scan body in, right? There we go. What is important right here is that we scan the lingual, buccal, distal, and mesial part of the scan body. Why? It's because it is important for us to be able to identify those or scan those for lab purposes. All right? Bear in mind, please. If you're scanning a scan body, scan the, scan the whole area so that when we send this to the lab, the lab will not scratch their head and saying, oops, I need, to be, I need this scan body to scan more, right? So after we have scanned the scan body, see right there, I can go to the next. I can now remove my scan body from the patient's mouth or a patient's tooth. So I can scan. The upper, obviously for the upper, you need to flip your tip over, right? For convenience. For the upper, it's going to be occluso, buckle, and then lingo. There you go. So this is the antagonist. So, all right, now after we have scanned the scan, uh, the, the antagonist, we go to the bite. Easier for you to scan the bite. Whenever you scan the bite, you always put your scanner parallel to any tooth surf to the buccal surface of the tooth. And then you can start from the posterior part of the tooth and roll it over to the anterior. And once you hear that ding sound, you can turn off your scanner. And let's wait for the software to align the scans. There, you have the scans right there, right? And then all you need to do is just to pick this um, post-process or the analyze page part, right? Don't forget to um, post-process it again. I will uh, say this again, what's the importance of post-process is to finalize the scans that we have, right? The software is going to um, uh, fill out some holes that we have created on the scans, as well as uh, the software is capable, will be capable of creating an STL file of our scans. That's in case the lab needs or if the lab wants you to submit the STL file, then you can actually um, bring up the STL file. Now it's, it's easier for us to do that uh, once after we have post-processed the scans. Right, so let's wait for it. It takes a few seconds. You can see from 48, it'll jump right into the 90s or something like that. There we go. All right, so let's wait for 100% of the process. And after we have post-process it, obviously we need to click this you and me guy right there. So there's a blue, I, blue and orange guy, I call it the uh, blue and orange guy. This is our communicate on how to send this case to DSG. As you can see there, send to DSG. All you need to do is just to click the send button uh, at the bottom of this screen, right? And then this particular case will be sent to DSG. All right. Now, I was talking about the STL, right? So after we send it, so let's say for example, the SG said, all right, Hermie, uh, Dr. Hermie, I need the STL file of that particular case. You can always go back to the patient's icon right here, right? Go to your uh, patient's name, 
which is my test IS, right? And this is my scan for, uh, for this particular uh, screw retain. I can right click on it, export, choose the scans. After you have chosen the scan, under the save type, save as type, this box, you can, uh, if you will notice, the, this is a DCM file. Again, guys, DCM is not the DICOM file that we get from CBCT scanner. DCM is a local file name as well from the TRIO scan. All right, so this is not a DICOM file. It's a DCM file, a local file from TreeShape. All you need to do is just to click this box with your left click mouse and choose STL file. Now you can name the file according to your patient's name, locate a folder where you want to save that STL file, and then you can hit save, right? And so that the STL file will be just saved into one of your folders. And you can grab that file and attach it in your email and send it to the lab who, who are requesting it, All right? That's all for the second part. Uh, Kelly, I'm ready for the um, uh, question and answer. The question is in regards to files and it's where are the STL or DCM files stored? Um, this STL and DCM files stored in your TRIOS computer. Now, if you have a, a server uh, and if your TRIOS computer is connected to your server, it'll be stored in your server. And that's also accessible from your three shape communicate account that you could access from any desktop as well. No, three shape communicate. No. Three shape communicate account is just, uh, it's just a storage of the pictures that you have taken or that you have sent. If you need your SEL file, your SEL file will be in your file in your computer or in your um, only in the trios computer. Yes. Got it. What else? I think and guys, always be reminded that the connection for the trios is not just for a uh, uh, clients client only. Let's say, let's say, for example, I only have one laptop, right? I can name that as my client. My trios is on my client laptop. However, you can choose to have a client server connection for your trios. Right. So if you have a lot of computers in your um, in your office, then you can have that those as a client and your server as your um, as your server, obviously. Right. And so everyone can turn on those uh, client trioses for their laptops so they can uh, they can scan the patient while you can also turn on your server, your trios in your server, and you know you can, you can look for any uh, of your patients and do your implant planning part right there. However, you cannot, if all of you are opening it up, you cannot open, uh, you cannot work on a single patient, right? So you, you, you can work on different patients. And so if you were going to open an STL for, for a particular patient, would it be in a folder under the patient name or some other folder? Yeah, uh, you, if I go to this patient's icon right here, so let's say for example, um, that's uh, Brian Stern, right? So I can click that patient's name and all I need to do is to go to that scan, say that I am, so this, yeah, this is the scan, highlight it with your left click mouse, right click and then click export scans and then choose STL file. You always need to click the patient's uh, name under patient's uh, lists. And once it shows up, go to that scan, right click, export, choose scans, change this to STL file, and then uh, you can put it in a folder. However, if you already have saved it in one folder, you can just go back to that folder and, um, uh, get the SDL file from that folder. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. And we have one more question. Can you please explain what the difference is between three shape dental system lab software 
and the number three, or wait a minute, and the three shaped dental desktop. All right. Which form are you using in this presentation? Uh, Thank I'm you. using, I am currently using the Trios dental desktop with my implant studio in it. The difference is that dental, soft, dental system software, you can also have the dental, um, the implant studio incorporated in that dental system. All right. So let's say, for example, Kelly is my lab, right? Kelly is my lab and I don't have a printer, right? So all I need to do is just to create my surgical guide, uh, implant planning and surgical guide design, and I will send that to Kelly. And now Kelly has a dental system, right? And, and with, a, um, with an implant studio incorporated in it, right? So let's say I forgot to create, Kelly, I forgot to create my surgical guide design. Would you be able to um, create it for me? Yes. Kelly will say yes. All I need to do is just to send my scan and implant planning. While Kelly has the dental system and implant studio incorporated with it, within it, before she can create a final restoration for that particular case, she can create my surgical guide design on, within dental system, within the incorporation of those two softwares. And she can just show it to me before finalizing it, and to finalize it, and then she can process it. Um, dental system software is basically a lab site, a lab software. This Trios dental desktop with implant studio right here is for clinics. However, there are some laboratories also out there who would want it to learn Trios at the same time implant studio within it so that they can talk apples to apples with their users. Sure, sure. Oh, we've got one more question came in. Yep. Um, are there any conflicts between any, any three softwares? No. Any, oh, what do you mean? Any? Are there any conflicts between any three shape softwares? No, there is no conflict. Got it. Yep, they're all and communicating with each other well. Terrific. And um, are you able to use um, Trios and Dental Desktop with a MacBook? Yes, uh, if you have a boot camp. A boot camp. Yes. God, I've never heard that before, so I wanted to repeat it. <laughs> you have a, an Apple with a boot camp just for you to have the Windows 10. Because you, you will not have the Windows 10. Um, Trios works with Windows 10. So if you have an Apple, you should have a boot camp so you could have the Windows 10 right in there so you could install the software as well. Got it. Okay. And that being said, I don't see any other questions coming in. And one more and just I, came in, Kelly. Oops, I missed it. Got it. Uh, what if I would like to set up a hybrid practice where I may have an in house lab? Which softwares and scanners might you recommend? Obviously, Trios, right? Scanner. <laughs> And yeah. uh, with an implant studio software right into the into your uh, into that Trios dental desktop, if you are a, a doctor or a clinic, right? But if you are a lab, uh, I would suggest a dental system incorporating with a, an implant studio software as well. Very good. Thank you for the great questions to all the yeah. attendees. Yeah. So I you also did an wanted amazing to, job. Really, very informative this evening. Yeah, I also wanted to add something, Kelly. That implant studio, you can actually do a complete um, uh, edentulous case, right? For implant studio, you could place four or more implants. Those all in four, all in five cases. You could work on that uh, as part of uh, the edentulous uh, workflow within implant studio that is incorporated in the software. Yes, and we this is actually one in a series of presentations and I'm I'm fairly certain that the fourth fourth presentation in the series is um specific to scanning edentulous. Yeah. I wish that uh, FDA um 
um, should be, you know, approving um, the Scrutane Crown for the U.S. And I'm very much excited for, you know, the Canada since they're already using it. Um, and uh, I would be very much delighted if FDA had already uh, approved that Scrutane Crown as part of Implant Studio with oh, of course in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, one last question popped in. Uh, can you show us how to extend and change the guide design, let's say, to get across arch stabilization? Um, yes, you can. Um, let me go right in here. Let me go right into this section right here. I will just go to the surgical guide design. So let's wait for the software to pick everything up. All right. And I, again, guys, if you have modified your implant planning, okay, if you have modified your implant planning, your surgical guide design um, will change in relation to the modification that you have created in implant planning. So you don't have to recreate the outline of the surgical guide. So if we are going to recreate um, here, as you can see right there, so if, if I have a, a full arch right here, I can actually draw an outline on that full arch right there, right? So I, I cannot do it because it's, it's just a quadrant. And then you can create a bar from this molar to the other molar okay, on the other quadrant. So you can stabilize that um, surgical guide when you're printing it. After you have finalized the printing part or cured it afterwards, then you can cut those, uh, those bar right there. So the bar is part of the design aspect? Uh, it, it can be part of the design aspect, but it could not be part of the design aspect. It's just to hold the arch in place so that when you create it in a printed uh when you print it out then it's it not doesn't yeah. yeah yeah but it can it could be incorporated if let's say for example right i have a free space right here my implant is here and my other implant is there you can create a bar in between those cylinder this is the cylinder okay i have a cylinder right here i have a cylinder right there I can create a bar to connect those two cylinders to make it more rigid. And I can modify it. I can change the size and um, I can, I can ch and modify the size of it. Perfect. All right. Got another question popped in. And that is in regards to CE. So I'll let Jessica address that. I think that's it um, from the audience. Uh, as far as technical questions regarding the presentation, Hermie. All right, cool. Thank you again. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, DSG. Always thank you for coming on board. Uh, I always love it when I hear Kelly learn something because that means you grabbed everybody because Kelly's our in-house expert and I always lean toward her. So thank you again, Dr. Hermie, for your time and attention today. And audience, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, for CE credits, they are going to be issued in the next two business days. They will be coming from an email that is CE certificates at dentalservices.net. So just in case your server doesn't recognize that email, check out your junk folder or feel free to email us at education at dentalservices.net if you don't receive yours by the end of the week. Uh, with that, there's a Kelly's information and Marissa's information is posted in the chat box. We have a webinar coming up next week on ceramic material selection and cementation protocols, tips and tricks with Dr. George Tyskowski. So we look forward to learning with you again in the future. Uh, any closing remarks, Dr. Hermie, Kelly, or Marissa? Well, thank you so much, guys, for inviting me again. You know, it's good to see, you know, folks um from the previous uh, trainings that we had or encounter that we have and it's good to meet new you know people from dsg and thank you so much guys for for this opportunity and we look forward to everybody joining us on a future event
Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Don't forget to complete your survey and let us kn know what you would like to learn about in the future. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.